we've always seen guys that have had drink problems, you know, bankruptcy, divorce, uh, drug problems, um, self-harm, suicide, dare I say it. And we've always said things like they haven't transitioned well, um, which is a big concern. And look, these guys might not have transitioned well, but a lot of those things are linked with CTE as well. And it's like, isn't it crazy to suggest that we haven't had CTE until now? So Dylan, we spoke with Ryan about the concussion story as it was breaking last week, but I wanted to get your thoughts on players taking legal action against the governing bodies over the long-term concussion issues. Uh, so, so it's, it's so big, like it's like a rabbit warren, like where do we go with it? Uh, look, if it's not just one person, is it? There's, there's a group of people um, and they're all of a, a similar age. Um, and if there's negligence involved somewhere, if something's been covered up or not been shared or conveniently not swept under the carpet, but um, I, I think there's, there's definitely a case there because, well, there is a case, you know, whether what we say or not, there's, there's something going ahead. So it's uh, ultimately quite scary. Um, it's upsetting because the, the game obviously now needs positivity. We need to rebuild the game after COVID and um, kick and defend rugby. Everyone's moaning about that. I quite like it. But, um, you know, rugby needs good stories. And, and this, unfortunately, feels like it might have been bubbling away for some time now. Um, and now we have to kind of wake up and, and smell the roses and, and deal with it because I don't think it's something that's just going to go away, you know. Um, it's serious. And... For all those involved, it's um, if you read some of the kind of the the personal kind of stories behind it, it's um, it's heartbreaking, you know. It's 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 fucking scary. Um, and I suppose yeah. I know you spoke about it a while ago on the podcast about a concussion you received when you scored in a Heineken Cup final. So, do you ever worry about the long term concussion issues that you might face, or is it something that in the back of your head? <laughs> in my head yeah uh look it's, it's one of these things I, I have my own issues um i don't really want to kind of delve into to what you know i struggle with and, and what my concerns are because i'm kind of fully aware this gets picked up and put put in newspapers and whatnot so i'd rather keep it personal but i, I have my concerns you know um have you spoken to th like steve thompson or any of the others involved about the, the case or yeah I, I know a few guys involved um, and I'm in regular contact with them. And I think that's the, um, the, the scariest thing is this isn't like a, like a doom and a scaremongering kind of story. These guys have families and they're genuinely struggling. And I think it's kind of scary to think that NFL's had, you know, CTE and, and issues with this injury for, for some time. And, and we play a very similar sport and we have never recognised, you know, CTE in our in our players, and we've always seen guys that have had drink problems, you know, bankruptcy, divorce, uh, drug problems, um, self harm, suicide. Dare I say it? And we've always said things like they haven't transitioned well, um, which is a big concern. And look, these guys might not have transitioned well, but a lot of those things are linked with CTE as well. And it's like isn't it crazy to suggest that we haven't had CTE until now, you know? So um, I think it's pretty scary for, for the game, if I'm honest. Um, and, and obviously for all those involved, there's, um, there's, there's families and um, behind every story, you know? Would you change rugby to avoid these issues? You know, like, would there be, would you suggest maybe less contact in training or... Yeah, I think like, that's, that's a pretty good solution. Like, if, if, if I signed up to the game, and, and this is the other thing, like, I've seen loads of people, and I want to I say this because it needs to be said. There's a lot of people saying, I would do it all again. But these, you know, I've looked at these guys. These are guys that have got sore shoulders, sore knees. These are not guys with early onset dementia. Like, if you said to me, if, if, I, if I had early onset dementia right now, and you asked me, would I do it all again? I'd say no because I want to live a long life and I want to recognize who my kids are and my wife and, and, and those sorts of things. If I could do it all again and have buggered knees and a buggered back, you know, I'd, I'd take that chance. Um, but when I, when I started, Ryan, when you started, I, until today or this week, last week, I didn't know dementia 
was a potential outcome for any rugby player. That that wasn't um, that wasn't kind of educated or, or taught to us. That wasn't uh, an option. You know, look, um, I think the game is what it is. You know, they're doing a good job of um, refereeing the laws of of high tackles, and they've taken a really strong standpoint on you know red cards. And we all sit here and not we. A lot of people sit there and say the game's gone soft, but for good reason, you know, seatbelt tackles are being outlawed and all these things. So the game is doing what it can in, in that respect. But, you know, I remember going to um, a world rugby uh, conference in Monaco uh, in 2016, and there's a whole lot of things going around the table. And I, I actually said, you know, my point at the meeting, the one thing I said was, I think contact training needs to be regulated because, uh, at the time, you know, my international environment was very structured and we knew how much sort of work we had in the week, but then you'd go back to a club environment where it was just, you know, up to whoever was coaching that day, how they felt, how long would go for and how many we would do. So I kind of said back then, you know, we need to look at NFL and how they regulate and almost a, an independent, um, what is it, organisation to... For, for clubs and, and environments or, or rugby clubs or teams to feed into, to be monitored. Because there's no way people should be experiencing concussion during the week. You know, if we can eliminate those risks, um, but again, you want players to be conditioned for, for purpose. So it's, it's, a, it's a tough argument, you know. Um, I think if we can control what happens in the week, um, that would be a good start, a good place to start. I mean, you hear some of these stories of these guys getting knocked out in training and then people just having a laugh and a joke and picking them back up and saying, you're all right, and stumbling around the pitch. Like, if if we saw that now, I think that if we saw that now, I think even the players are being coached to spot things on the field. Like, that's what we're all getting coached at the moment. Like, you spot anything in a teammate. I mean, I've had games where we were playing and Bernie Stortoni was Argentinian. He started speaking in Spanish on the pitch. <laughs> He's calling moves in Spanish, you know. The guys are obviously picking up. Bernie, what, what are you talking about? And I had to say, no, no. And that's you know, you see these little there's these little telltales that you can see. People are getting angry. People are getting upset. Um, I've been on the end of it. I go, I go the angry route. Me and Callum Gibbons both got knocked out in the same game about a year and a half ago, and I was raging. Sat the thing. Bets comes down. My wife to see me in the in the dressing room, and I'm like, what took you so fucking long? And all the boys are like, well, you're right. And she could see like that switching me. Meanwhile, you've got Callum Gibbons sat next to me, booing his eyes out on the bed, like crying. And it's it's mad. So you can spot all these little telltales. And I think we are we have made a shift um, and it's going in the right direction. But yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that it's taken till now. Eh? Mm.